Fresh Future. Welcome to another episode of Fresh Future Live right here on Fresh Future TV. I'm Minister Tiffany and you should already know that we are ready for another Sunday where we learn about Jesus. But more specifically, we have a surprise. We're throwing in a monkey wrench because you guys thought we were finished learning about the Holy Spirit. But we couldn't have put all there is to know about the Holy Spirit in just four weeks. And even still, there won't be enough time for us to teach you everything about the Holy Spirit. But we're going to do our best with this month of October as we continue on with learning about the Holy Spirit. So we have a teacher that you've already been introduced to who's going to continue her lesson on how the Holy Spirit empowers us. You see my muscles? My muscles are fresh, bro. You don't want it. The devil don't want it. Anyway, I digress. Our lesson's gonna begin in... Good morning, class teacher. Happy Sunday. My name is Josie Flores, and I will be doing the prayer today. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for everything that you have given us, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for never leaving us, oh God, in no kind of way, oh God. We thank you, God, for believing in us, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for giving us another opportunity to be in your word, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for loving us, for loving us and, and letting us be here in your presence, oh God, in your temple, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for hope, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for faithfulness, oh God. We thank you, God, for never never being rude to us, oh God. Never giving up on us, oh God. Never throwing us away, oh God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for letting us spread the gospel, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. And we love you, oh God. 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 We thank you, oh God, for being our father, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh God, we thank you, oh God. We thank you for all the hurt and all the pain that's been washed away, oh God. All the misunderstandings, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for covering us, oh God. Even when we're having attitudes and being rude, oh God, we still praise you, oh God. And you never get mad at us. You still forgive us, oh God. You still forgive us, oh God. We thank you for all the teachers who are who are teaching us this lesson to us. On. We thank you, oh God, for dying for us, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for sacrificing, oh God. We thank you, oh God, so we could be in your presence again, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's Jaden here. Today I'll be reading the scripture of John 15, 5 from the ICB version. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If a person remains in me, and I remain in him, he will produce much fruit. But without me, he can do nothing. Thus ends the reading of this word. Peace. Hi, Press Start. My name is Alexa, and this is how I get ready for prison worship. I keep the Lord on my mind. Then I listen to the songs, I wave my hands, and I stomp my feet. And most importantly, I dance. Bye. I get that. Hey, I get that. Jesus, I get that. Hey, I get that. Jesus.
It's activity time. And today we're going to bring back a fresh future favorite and do a word unscramble. So you may want to get those notes that you've been taking over the past month about the Holy Spirit because our topic titles will certainly help you with unscrambling these words. Get ready. Here we go. <laughs> Game over. Game over. Now we will be reading Galatians 5 verses 13 through 18, then we're going to skip to 22 through 26. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love, for the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you're always biting and devouring one another, watch out, beware of destroying one another. 
So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide our lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who do belong to Christ have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. I hope nobody packed up. I hope nobody put their stuff away because we have more to learn. Where you going? Thank you, Marlene. You ready? We're going to talk about Galatians now because Paul says something that's also really important in this whole idea of the Holy Spirit empowering us. You guys ready? Okay. So he talks about freedom. We just learned about how we need faith for the Holy Spirit to come and live inside of us. And when he lives inside of us, he changes us with his love. He roots us in his love. He gives us understanding. He causes us to transform into his likeness, right? But before all that happens, something really important has to happen. We have to choose him. And so that's why Paul is talking about freedom. Say it with me. I am free indeed. I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. I'm sorry. I'm not going to go off on a tangent. Not today. Okay. We are free indeed. So what does that mean? That means that our freedom comes with responsibility. Right? So that means that when we choose something, that there's a natural consequence that comes with that. And so we have to be careful about our choices because there is a reaction to our action all the time, right? Cause and effect. There's always something that's going to happen based off of what we did. Paul's trying to tell us that. And so in the book of Galatians, what we just read, so Paul says, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's really important because that means that you must know how to love yourself first before you know how to love your neighbor. And how do we know how to love ourselves? I wonder, I already gave you one scripture, John 3, 16. Does anybody else know any scriptures about God's love for us? Where, where, where does it say that God loves us? Tell me. I'll wait. I promise you, I love it so much. There are consequences to choosing not to do God's will. So when we do selfish acts and when we choose not to put God first, then there's certain fruit that comes with us. Some of that fruit may be anger. Some of that fruit may be jealousy. Some of that fruit may be 
frustration. And the same thing goes for the other side. When we decide to take on God's will, when we decide to do what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do, then that's how we walk in the Spirit. Paul gave us this visual of us walking in the Spirit. So I did a little bit of research, y'all, and really quickly. To walk in the Spirit can also mean to live in the Spirit or stroll in the Spirit. So when you live in the spirit, you don't visit every once in a while. Like you live there, like your house, like your house is your house. You don't visit your house. You go there every day. You sleep there every day. You wake up there every day. You come back to your house every day. That's living in it, right? Think of your favorite park. Think of when you go somewhere that you absolutely love and you're strolling. When you stroll, you are taking your time. You're enjoying the scenery. You're taking it all in. The weather is nice. The wind is blowing. All this stuff is happening. You're not in a rush. You're calm. You're at ease. And that is the attitude we should have when it's time to spend time with God. Love your neighbor as yourselves. We're able to know how much God loves us. That helps us to know how important we are. And we're able to love ourselves because God first loved us. So if I am to love my neighbor as myself, wow, then they're greatly valued too. So then I, I must serve them because God didn't just die for me, he died for them. He doesn't just care for me, he cares for them. He just doesn't wanna see me prosper he wants to see all of them prosper. And that's why using my freedom to help others is God's will for our lives. In the scriptures, Heavenly Father teaches us about the fruits of the Spirit. It's not talking about real fruit that you eat. It's talking about what happens to us when we have the Spirit of God in our hearts. Fruit of something means the result of something. It's the thing that happens at the end. The fruit of an apple tree after it's all done growing is... Apples. 
The fruit of an orange tree is oranges. And the fruit of a grapevine is grapes. But there are also fruits when we do things too. The fruit of eating lots of sugar is... We're hyper! <laughs> the fruit of brushing our teeth is... We have clean teeth. And do you know what the fruit of exercising is? We get stronger. The Spirit of God can be with us when we keep the commandments. When we do things that invite the Spirit, the Spirit of God can be with us. And when the Spirit is with us, that has fruits too. The first fruit of the Spirit is love. When we have the Spirit with us, we know that God loves us, and we are filled with love for God and for other people. Another fruit of the Spirit is joy. We feel really happy, and not just for a little while. We feel happy all the time. Another fruit of the Spirit is peace. We don't feel worried or angry or stressed. Our hearts can rest and we feel calm and peaceful. Another fruit of the Spirit is long suffering. That means we can be really patient even when other people are causing problems for us. Another fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. We are kind and caring with other people and other things. Another fruit of the Spirit is goodness. We only want to think about good things, and we only want to do good things. Another fruit of the Spirit is faith. That means we believe in Jesus Christ, and we are willing to do what He asks us to do. The next fruit of the Spirit is meekness. Meekness means that we can control our emotions and control our actions, even if we're having a bad day. And the last fruit of the Spirit is temperance. That means we can say no to something that isn't good for us, even if we really want it. God loves us and He wants to bless us with good things. When we have the Spirit with us, lots of good things happen. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. And that's why we need to try our best to always do things that invite the Spirit. The End Okay guys, that sums it up. We are at the end. We talked about the works of the flesh. We talked about selfishness. We talked about jealousy. We talked about anger. All of that being fruit of the choice that we make not to follow God. But when we use our freedom to follow God and to serve others, we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us and we produce fruit too. And that fruit is good fruit. Do we know what the fruit of the Spirit is? Love, peace, patience, joy, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All of that is called the fruit of the Spirit. It grows like trees and plants in our hearts and it becomes real and you'll begin to see yourself change. That's how you know that you've made room You've allowed the Holy Spirit to come in, chill out, and to change you. And once you begin to change, you are totally empowered by the Holy Spirit. You start getting cuts in the spirit. You start like flexing, having biceps and triceps. <laughs> and most importantly, you're able to obey the Holy Spirit and live in the spirit 
every day. You're able to hear God talk to you. You're able to not just respond when you feel some type of way, but you're able to hold back when you want to do something that may not please God. That's real power. That power is rooted in love and that power exists in you today. Hi, my name is Taeja and I will be explaining the Fresh Future Perspective. Out of all of the fruits of the Spirit, I think that I struggle with patience the most. Yes, I do think that the Holy Spirit has access within me because when I became a child of God, I allowed myself to be all that God wants me to be. I think that something that would help someone learn how to receive the Holy Spirit is them coming out to learn someone's teachings and applying it to their lives. I truly hope that you learn how the Holy Spirit can empower you. So even when we feel like we could be a little more patient or a little more loving or a little more kind, we try our best to do that, but not in our strength because we will fail. We do it with the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is how the Holy Spirit empowers us. But I have news for you, and it could be sad news depending on how you look at it. The Holy Spirit can't empower you if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So today I have a question for you. Are you saved? If your answer was no to those questions, the good news is that you can say yes right now by declaring with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And you're saved. Now if you're already saved, your job is just to welcome those who accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Because guess what? Our family just got a little bit bigger. We welcome you to our family. And now, Yana's going to take it away. Hey, Fresh Future, I know you love the Word of God and just enjoy the service, right? All right, so now guess what it's time to do? Like, subscribe, and share this channel. If you love this message, please share it with all your friends, your family, your, your, your classmates, share with whomever needs to hear the Word of God because we're here to make disciples that make disciples. Let's watch the blueprints because they're hilarious, right? Okay, let's go. <laughs> Thank you.
We're in his presence and we're enjoying it. That is how you walk in the flesh. And if you walk, I'm sorry, that is how you walk in the spirit. Don't be walking in that flesh. It's Jaden here. I said French. Yep. <laughs> Two hours later. I get the Lord on my mind. Second. Do 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 these nuts. Do 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 Boom, boom. Sorry. Girl. What? <laughs>